This is a note about how to use Postpack to post-processing of GNSS data of um, multi-beam navigation data or multi-beam navigation and positioning data using different methods of post-processing in Postpack MMS. So this is a part of my uh, PhD study and um, the reason why I want to make this video because this is a note for myself. I found that uh, sometimes I need to record and uh, say some of the method that I learned on the way and, um, and then I can help me to remind me to relearn it and um, use it later because uh, I don't have access to post pack MMS all the time. So um, when I have it, I will try to use most out of it to, uh, to learn all the different data processing method inside post pack as much as I can. Even some of the methods, some of the techniques that uh, are actually not used in my research but I still discover and uh, try it out. So the that so what I have here in my screen is a organization of what I have. Um, so I have um, a folder on the left here which is, a, uh, which is a Quincy project and inside Quincy project I have a folder called log file log files inside log file I have a um, folder I have a lot of files and here there is a file called 2019 which is a uh, re raw recorded navigation and positioning data recorded using post view software on board the vessel Inside this data, it has um, positioning data, which is uh, yeah, the correction signal was SPAT, Marine Star G2, I think so, or maybe Omni Star G2. It had raw navigation data, it had no raw GPS positioning data, and it also, it also contains motion sensor data. So it's just for everything in one place, and it's recorded using post view on the vessel. The other source of data that I have, which is I want to show here, inside log file, inside um, here, log file order 26, which is um, station data. So this station is um, actually GNSS station data. I want to put it here. I can open it using the notepad plus plus so I can show it here easily. So this one is actually um, virtual. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how this data was uh, generated. Uh, this is this is base station data, but I'm not sure how this data was generated. I think it was generated using RTK NetWest. So I want to import it into Postpack and see where is this location. But what I think is this is a virtual uh, reference station established using Postpack uh, using RTK NetWest, which is a uh, um, RTK correction uh, services in West Australia uh, for uh, subscription. So they have a more denser denser. Uh, coast station around Western Australia, especially in the metropolitan area. The format of this one is Vinex and uh, it has some other file which is uh, I think GPS, uh, Ephemeris, uh, Gronas Ephemeris and Galileo Ephemeris. <coughs> So uh, <clears throat> the first step is I want to open Postpack here and uh, I'm going to create a new project. I just create a new default project and I save the project inside this folder. So the, I want to process this data. So I'm going to name it as uh, this one. But I want to name it uh, with the method that the methods of post processing that I use as well. In this case, it's going to be um, P, it's going to be infusion, PPP method. I'm going to save it in here. The next step is I'm going to drop in the raw data, which including zero um, zip four file. <clears throat> but because they are attached to each other, so I just grab one of them in. So you can see that here is a uh, post, which is position and uh, orientation survey data. It have the IMU data as well. It is checking here. IMU data is checking here. Uh, so this step, the software is gonna checking for GPS and ephemeris, uh, Kronos ephemeris, and other positioning system ephemeris. 
it's going to be a family risk, normal family risk. I think the cost based family risk and uh, face based family risk. It is called precise and family risk for both GONAS and GPS. So we can see here because this software is made by Trimble. So we can have the data from Trimble is available here. From here is, is also available from other 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 service. But most of them are available from Trimble. <coughs> from IGS as well. So now the infirmary is downloading and some of them is downloaded from the internet. So we have the GPS infirmary is downloaded. Uh, Precise is not yet downloaded, it's not available for Precise 1. So the next step is going to ask me the rover antenna specification. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is the left view model 2 because I have, um, I think this is model 2. Because I think in my method here, you can see the antenna here is it is uh, the feed model two antenna. So I'm gonna select it. So you have an overview of the data. Looks like this. This is an overview of the data because I want because there are different methods of uh, GNSS post processing or TPK in postpad to see it. I want to save the save the project uh, as I go. I go to project here. So in order to see what are all the available post processing methods in postpad, I will go to project. Go to GNSS initial processor. And it will show me the GNSS mode and heading sensor. So in here, the bunch of the uh, many post processing methods that uh, included inside Postpad. Some of them is available, some of them is not available. So um, in this video note, I'm gonna show and note down all the methods that are available for this license, which is uh, the Fusion Smart Base is not available based on the license. The Fusion PPRTA is not available as well. It's available for the Fusion. Uh, I think the Fusion Smart Base can be available uh, for the case that I have multiple, have multiple, multiple. Um, coordinate point in the survey area if I have multiple coordinate point in the survey area can be available I'm gonna try it later in this uh, note but I tried it before and it didn't work because of the uh, licensing I think so uh, no not because of the licensing but partly because of licensing so the licensing limited me to search the uh, smart base on the internet but if I I, I didn't have um, I didn't have enough number of base station to import the base station data inside Postpack and then generate the network of a smart base and then inside the Postpack. I didn't have that chance. So um, I'm going to try it out but I'm not sure smart base is available. TPRT8 is another very precise positioning method provided by Panix uh, but it's not available for this my license. So the next one is uh, infusion single base. This is the most popular method, and this is the most accurate accurate method that I can use for my data for this data, because I have a couple by station I can use uh, normal, but I just need one station, and the method is called uh, single base station. Why it's called infusion? Because uh, so I'm going to talk about why uh, postback call infusion later. And the infusion PPP, which is similar to precise point positioning. Um, GNSS, uh, normal GNSS positioning. But in this case, we also have navigation data uh, from initial uh, motion unit. So that's why the solution or the method called Infusion PPP. So basically, Infusion PPP is including normal DPP, GNSS PPP, and uh, motion and navigation. It's combina a combination of both GNSS and motion sensor data. Because we know that this use a uh, post MV system, and post MV system is not a poorly uh, GNSS positioning system is integrated with uh, motion and navigation data and the next method I found that is working which is fusion autonomous even this method the accuracy of this method is not high and the final method is primary marine star navigation this method is pretty good um, this method provides a little bit better accuracy in comparison with real-time marine star so so in this uh, note, I'm going to try uh, single base, TPP, autonomous, marine star nav. That, uh, those are the four methods that I know it will be working for me. But the other method called smart base, I'm not sure it's working. I'm going to try at the end of this note, but I'm not sure it will, working or not. it will be working or not. So the first method I'm going to look at, which is infusing TPP. So in order to post-processing data using post-pack, 
I want to divide it into two separate scenarios. The first scenario that uh, we have post-MV uh, mobile mapping or hydrographic mapping that's uh, recorded um, using post view and just that we don't have anything else, just that. Uh, the second scenario we have that we have both rover as a rover data and we have rover data and we both have base station data. So, I'm going to divide it into two scenarios. So the first scenario, uh, for example, that you do to finish the hydrographic surveying work or mobile mapping work. And here, I only have the motion data, um, uh, navigation data recorded by post view. Uh, because I, at the time of the survey, I didn't um, get the uh, download the base station. I didn't set up the base station. Or it's too far from land, like the ocean. Uh, open ocean mapping, so I cannot set up any any uh, base station. So I can use three methods to put processing data to improve my data. I can use infusion PPP, which is basically similar to uh, a side point positioning. I can use uh, infusion autonomous, which is um, a version of I think it's uh, similar to direct raw position CNS positioning, position CNS positioning together with navigation data. So the, the, the accuracy is just roughly about one meter. This accuracy is up to um, this decimeter and primary marine star navigation, which is a little bit improved in comparison with real-time marine star or only star navigation. So for the first part, I'm going to uh, try to use Infusion PPT because I named this project called Infusion, so the I chose Infusion PPT. So one thing I need to note that when working with post pack, we can only choose one processing method and one result. So normally, normally if we have, so if we have, um, so if we have, um, if we want to experiment and if we want to try and process data using different different post processing method, we have to. We I found that we have to. So we can. So again, here is. Um, so again, if I want to, if I want to test and use different post-processing method for different data, I need to different post-processing method to different data. I need to use to create different post project, which is inconvenient, but um, just to understand that because um, for for each project, we can only choose one post-processing method. So in this case, I choose Infusion PPP, and um, to start the processing, I just choose Run. Uh, so before running Infusion PPP, I'm going to read a little bit about what is Infusion PPP. So if we have a look at the um, post pack manual here, so I'm going to to open the post pack manual, I'm going to go to uh, Start menu and go to post pack here. And it's going to have a um, file called post pack GNSS, post pack MMS, GNSS initial tools user manual. If I just open that one, I can have this uh, document. So this document here looks like it, which is uh, post pack MMS GNSS initial tool software. So to save time, um, I'm going to come back to here and download the data. Basically, the PPP of the side point positioning uh, will view our raw recorded data together with corrected uh, ephemeris, uh, GPS log, and all the other data we can get from Trimble or or from 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 IN. IGF, which is International Geodetic Service uh, website. And the, the interesting thing and the good thing about Postpack is that all that thing can be done using the tool. So we actually don't need to download it by ourselves. The software will automatically help uh, download it and process it for you. So we want to try to do that here using Postpack. So you say that PPP data are not downloaded uh, completely. So we run the PPP data downloaded. I'm gonna go for yes. So in here, I'm gonna choose the express mode and the program we're just searching on the internet to see uh, which one is available, which one is not. So you can see here we have the precise uh, GPS and family is available. We, we have, okay. As a software tell me that something wrong with uh, my choice here, it say that the internet connection was interrupted during a previous download. Please restart the application to resume downloading. So, uh, with my experience when uh, working with 
as a uh, uh, post pack um, using infusion PPP. Uh, I sometimes need to uh, let it finish the downloading and I continue to the download because it's still downloading here and it doesn't work. It sometimes doesn't work. So I just hit the download again and then it, it will tell me this again. So what I need to do for this one it's just downloading. Actually, I, it's still downloading in the background, but it sim, sim doesn't work. It seems not working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just um, close this. And yes, anyway, I'm gonna save the project and then I'm gonna close the project. So on the left here, I'm gonna go to the log folder and I will open the project again. The project uh, called Infusion PPP. And I go to PPP and I hit the start processing again and do the download again. So for some reason now, oh, it's downloaded. And now I can just import it into the software. So we can see all oh, is imported. So after everything is imported, I'm gonna run the processing. So you can see here the estimated remaining time and the estimated accuracy here is pretty good. It's, it's about 0 0.1 meter using PPP. So let's wait time. While waiting for Postpack to process the data, I'm going to have a look at uh, what is Infusion PPP here. Infusion PPP. Okay, so you can see here in Postpack they said that Infusion PPP or IA PPP, the Postpack MMS software implements Infusion Precise Point Positioning PPP. So PPP provides for positioning accuracies on the order of a few decimeters without a base receiver. And hence is useful for those applications where a base receiver cannot be found or installed. Such applications include airborne surveying in remote areas or open ocean hydrographic surveys far from land. The typical PPP algorithm implements a floated ionosphere free solution that requires up to 30 minutes to converse from an initial meter level position accuracy to a desired decimeter accuracy. That means that um, if we go out and we do survey, if we go out and uh, we do survey using PPP and we know that we're gonna we're not gonna have a, a base station and we know that we will collect um, post and raw data for processing data in PPP mode which is I think with PPP mode we don't even need to have the um, satellite correction I don't think we need satellite correction we don't need SPAS service so we just collect the data, the raw GNSS navigation data, and then we use PPP method. We can achieve 0 0.1 meter of accuracy. I think which is which is incredible because sometimes we don't we don't have the availability of, of, of um, we don't have the availability of um, S pass correction method, but we still have can achieve that level of accuracy. We can see that here. The processing is finished and the level of uh, estimated accuracy is up to mm, less than 0 0.1 meter which is which is pretty good which is which is better than and achievable than most of the hydrographic survey application such as special order for uh, I, I, I hate show order 1a so i think this is a good method that uh, I'm, I'm was, i was not aware of before uh, using post pack and a lot of people i think was not aware of that um, a lot of people were thinking okay if we need to process the data we need base station data but in this case actually we don't really need base station data so um, uh, that what I say, I just want to go to here and make the report and and um, say and then produce a report. So just uh, producing a report and then after producing a report, I'm gonna open the report to see the result of the of the achieved accuracy of the processing method of this one. So it's done. I can open the report here. We can see that the uh, processing mode which is infusion PPP here and I can see what I want to see is the achieve uh, decoration data which is only star BBS which is uh, surprisingly for me because this survey was surveyed in 2019 but the correction data was only star BBS I don't know why but that is data reported maybe the setting was, was something wrong there but I can see that the uh, a lot of the report, which is including a lot of information 
I'm not focused on here. I see the, the a top view of the trajectory information of all the process data here. The most important information for me, I think, which is the accuracy of the post process data. Okay, so here is the position accuracy of post process data, which is including both uh, horizontal position and uh, vertical position, which is called the horizontal, which is uh, easting and northing position, and the vertical position, which is down position. And we can see here that uh, the maximum um, the, the uncertainty for so the accuracy for 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 northing, which is 0.2 meter. The uh, accuracy for easting, I think, is about 0.23 meter. And the uh, accuracy for a vertical for, for for elevation, which is a bit less than 0.3 meter. And um, coming back to what the what we read from the uh, postcard uh, manual here, uh, they said that for this method, the typical algorithm implement a floated um, ionosphere free solution that require up to 30 minutes to converse. That means you can see here, we can see here the accuracy from the beginning is very, very low. And this is because the reason, maybe because of the reason, because uh, it takes some time to have the converse solution, which is uh, so that's why from the beginning here the accuracy for for north position is is up to uh, somehow 0.3 meter, but after probably about 30 minutes here, the accuracy is uh, going down to just 0. Point, maybe 3 to 4 centimeter, which is uh, incredible. So, uh, so what is the technical message for this? Because okay, so the technical message for this is that if we do survey and in an area uh, that we don't have base station, uh, sometimes we want to, uh, sometimes everything is set up and we're gonna jump directly to the survey, but that is not really a good idea. We want to uh, run around and around, or we want to wait about 30 minutes to start the recording data to achieve the best accuracy. So it takes us about 30 minutes. It's not really running the survey, but just setting up and checking or do some uh, figure eight to make sure that the, the solution converts and then we can uh, do the PPP post-processing with the high accuracy after we get back and then uh, for, for using post back to process data. This is a really good point to know. The next thing we get in from that year is a significant loss of the coherent carrier phase checking such as due to an uh, aircraft sharp turns will require the BNSS only PPP algorithm to start restart to this converse uh, okay so okay so that means that uh, we can see here sometimes sometimes the accuracy of the northing is up to 0.2 probably because because the outage or uh, the uh, uh, outage of the um, because of the loss of the co coherent carrier phase tracking so if we go to the um, we have a so at this time we have we see here the uncertainty is very high and we can check the number of satellite and the the s uh, the the p dot at that time I think it's had I think it's had we we'll, we'll, we'll have some relation relating to p dot and the number of satellite so if we check that I hope that we have a little supply somewhere. You can see here. So <clears throat> this area is um, the uncertainty is more. So this is the reason why because the it, it blocked out some the signal was blocked out was not continuous here, and then it will take um, about 30 minutes for the PPP method to get the convert solution back. So that's why the accuracy is uh, is less. This is is not is not as good as the uh, the other place in this area. And this is we can see that here. Very clearly because the satellite signal was, was, was not continuous and if we see if, if it has this p-dot somewhere and the p-dot is not showing here uh, but um, let's go back to the accuracy plot so we can see that here and here is a bump and if we go to this play plot here uh, we go to, I'm uh, not sure where can I, can I find the um, primary GNSS navigation data. So the cycle ship is here. It somehow make the data not as good at that time. Um, I want to show the, not the, the, 
historical dog. Okay. Okay, so here is the secondary GNSS. I want to see the primary GNSS. I want to see the P dog. Okay, maybe the secondary is better. It's showing that and on a number of center lines. So if I want to, sh I, if, so there's a correlation between the P dog uh, and um, and the quality and the, the accuracy that achieved by the uh, PPP method. So here, P dog is up to 4.6. That's why the positioning uh, here is is low. So P dog is really important for for the side point positioning. If you have a base station, um, this is not is less important. But uh, if you don't have a base station, this is really important. And uh, PPP is not an ideal method when we do survey inside port and harbor lines this survey. The reason why, because normally in port and harbor, even it's not ideal to uh, set up a base station in the range of a couple of kilometers to get a centimeter level accuracy, we still can find uh, um, a free course um, base station around, or maybe service uh, subscription base base station around in the in the radius of about 30 meter at least or maybe less and then we can achieve the level accuracy up to centimeter or, or less than centimeter or well, roughly one centimeter uh, uh, one decimeter or 0 0.1 meter not more than um, 0 0.1 meter like this so uh, we can see that you know, PPP processing is actually really dependent and there's a high correlation between the accuracy of PPP method and uh, PDOC or vertical dot, e, 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 easting dot and nothing dot. I want to look for the um, number of satellite, but I can't, I can't find it here. Uh, yeah, to be honest, that's not the information I normally look at. Um, it should be somewhere here. I'm sure it should be somewhere here. Here you go. So we can see the solution status here. The number of satellite. Uh, let's see. <coughs> Number of number of uh, it's interesting. It's just interesting. So, P dot here is good, but somehow it pop up here. And the number of satellite GPS is very consistent. The minimum is seven, but uh, this for this area the quality is not consistent. Even the number of satellite in this area is high, but it uh, it it was blocked out. I think sometimes, so it reduced to less than maybe six. Then it will take about thirty minutes for this method for PPP method to get back to the converged solution. So that's why we have the the so actually the number of satellite is not reducing. It's very high in this moment, but because of the inconsistent uh, because of the block out because the some of the satellite was blocked out for just some moment but some of that moment was causing the bad the uh, the, the high uncertainty here that's interesting and we can see that here for PPP method the only satellite providing this solution which is GPS PPP method doesn't cannot be used using Kronos and the solution for Kronos here is zero PPP cannot be used uh, a Japanese uh, satellite or beta. But another information we can see from the report here. And um, let's continue to read about the manual. So we know that it takes 30 minutes to uh, converse, so that's why some, some of the part in the uncertainty or accuracy achieved was not consistent, sometimes up to 0 0.3 meter. Sometimes it's even very good, it's uh, 3 centimeter. So I can see that if we use this method for open sea positioning or open sea hydrography survey or which uh, the just no block of the satellite so the signal is always always very good and then I believe that PPP will provide really really good um, result of accuracy. Um, I'm, I'm eager to try it out using post pack or post some V data from other projects that I was using to see how it's work. Um, actually not relating to my research and also my current job that I think is really helpful information to know. And I think a lot of people don't know that you can actually use post and V raw data to process post process data, improve the positioning both horizontal and vertical data using post pack without a base station. Um, the significant loss of coherent carrier phase tracking such as due to aircraft sharp turn will require NSS only people to restart this conversion.
Infusion PPP implements a Planet Initial 8 PPP algorithm that overcomes this shortcoming. Ah, oh, I'm wrong. By preserving positioning accuracy through Genesis L6 using initial cost, Infusion PPP use optimal smoothing to carry out the convert the symmetry level position accuracy backwards in time and thereby a GPP level position accuracy throughout the survey trajectory. So that means uh, that mean that um, actually infusing PPP is actually better than normal PPP. It's a spare normal PPP is just only using GNSS data and um, this is a cheap by using infusion PPP and I think if we don't have fusion PPP if we give normal PPP which is we can extract Poson V data to Rhinex and then using uh, RTK lib to process um, the PPP solution normally using RTK lib software we can compare with and I think the, the uncertainty is larger than this case so um, but that's good to know that it's good to know that um, so and then it said that it uh, achieved up to the symmetry level accuracy so what they claim in the instruction here and what really the achieved accuracy is, is, is accurate but um, we may question that okay they report this accuracy but how the accuracy is calculated so i watched a uh, recent uh, webinar by uh, um, a planning and they said that um, the way they calculate the uh, root mean square error is by just um, comparing the solution of the positioning from different satellites so basically they have um, to achieve one accurate solution or position they just it just uh, only requires four four, num 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 four satellites uh, minimum and we can see here the number of satellites is always more than four which is uh, eight so they can do something like this they can make the uh, ten or eight combination of satellite and they compare each combination, but each combination of satellite can provide one position solution, and then eight combination of satellite they can have eight combination of um, position solution, and then they can um, calculate the standard deviation. By the way, how I'm not sure how they calculate the root mean square error, but basically it's just the um, a combination of uh, different maybe um, two times of uh, standard deviation or maybe one times of standard deviation but at least this is the way that they calculate the root mean square error of course we need to understand what is root mean square error here and then that uh, I, I finished processing uh, post MV data using post pack MMS with the method is infusing the side point positioning so this is a way that I do the side point positioning inside Jimbo inside using post pack so this this is actually the we can call that how to uh, this is how we can process uh, post MV navigation data using the side point positioning using post pack software one of the things that um, I want to do which is I want to make some plot and statistics that I can put in my research or my report so I'm going to select uh, here which is uh, both uh, each thing and nothing in one plot because I want to report it uh, the horizontal uncertainty separately from the vertical uncertainty and uh, one of the things I was looking for which is the uh, statistic here but I'm not sure why it's not working for me because if I can show the statistic here I can show some of the information uh, but I don't no problem it's not really matter so I'm going to go to file and export so I can export this graph out and I can put in this location uh, I'm not sure that's the location that I want to now and this inside infusion here inside mission inside report and I would say uh, P -P -P. I would say that uh, infusion PPP and this is just for writing to IMS and then the next one here which is uh, infusion PPP but vertical IMF so you can see that from the beginning it is really bad it is 0.5 meter uncertainty but later on it can achieve pretty good 0.2 like 5 centimeter accuracy which is incredible and I want to compare that uh, with the real time so we can see here the real time 
which is uh, 0 0.4, which is pretty good. And real time is also the same because of the the collection and the side line will block out and the, the same pattern of the accuracy. So absolutely this must be because survey in a, in a port and so it may sometimes block by the construction or obstruction or another bigger bigger um, passenger or cargo ship uh, passing by. Then we can export this and this is going to be uh, S class real time. Mm, maybe uh, on the star GBS, which is uh, Horizon 4 IMS. And then the last thing I want to export, which is this one, which is just uh, the vertical IMS. Uh, the vertical IMS. And then I'm done. So I have the report here, I have the, all the information. In the report, I have all the information, which is the Processing mode, which is the um, product, uh, which is mm, some of the file like processing file and the uh, the um, the infirmaries that I use, which is she downloaded from here. I actually didn't import it, which is which is downloaded from from the start line. But basically, that the one that we can use, and after processing the the output file, which is S mission here. Dot L, which is uh, as bad trajectory file, and after this, I can use this file to input into iPad, carries, or any other uh, hydrographic data processing software, even open source software as well. But I, I can even delete the um, navigation out of this of this one using Python. Actually, online we can find like um, aspects Python. We we can do that, uh, the reading FS using linear passing aspect data, uh, the Python passing FS data, the aspect IMU data. You can see that it has um, yeah, here in pitch and row and pitch, uh, acceleration, angle rate, and the stuff. But we can read it, we can read it using uh, uh, struct, using struct. So we can find a script here, which is from visualization lab at uh, CCOM UNX. So that is this for this note about how to use post pack or how you to how to post processing hydrographic and navigation data using the side point positioning method using post pack software.